Well, this is not really what I want to be talking about, but it has to be said, so... Today I want to give you guys an update on my sick goldfish and talk about the results that I got back from the University of Florida Aquaculture Lab regarding a diagnosis for them. Now this all started back in May, so I'm going to give you guys a quick recap here just to bring everyone up to speed. I just realized yesterday how long it's been. A full six months. It's been half a year of dealing with this. That's insane. It all started back in May when I noticed that some of the goldfish in a few of the different tanks in my fish room were looking very sick. The main symptom was severe dropsy that affected multiple fish at once. Now dropsy is actually fairly common in goldfish but many people seem to agree that it's actually quite rare to have a widespread outbreak of contagious dropsy. So being that this looked highly contagious and was quickly spreading and affecting multiple fish at once, I was highly concerned. It's important to note here that dropsy in itself is not a disease. Dropsy is a symptom of a number of different diseases. When we talk about dropsy, what we're referring to is the condition when a fish's scales are raised or raised and puffed up from the sides of its body to give it a pine cone like appearance. This is caused by fluid retention in the body cavity and usually fluid retention in a fish is caused by failing organs, more specifically a failing kidney. Kidneys can fail to function properly due to bacteria viruses, parasites, poor water quality, or even just plain old kidney failure due to something like old age or possibly even genetics. Because dropsy can have so many different underlying causes of why it's happening, it's very very difficult, if not impossible, I think to treat. And even when you can pinpoint the, the specific underlying cause of why you're experiencing dropsy in your fish, sometimes it's still untreatable because the root cause is usually some sort of kidney malfunction or even kidney failure, and kidney failure is a very serious and oftentimes irreversible problem. Even though in my personal experience dropsy is almost always, if not always, incurable, I wasn't just going to stand by and do nothing, so I went off the working assumption that my fish were being affected by a bacterial infection, and I settled on a course of treatment that I thought was appropriate for that. And actually, initially, I did feel like I was seeing some improvement and some progress, so I started to be guardedly optimistic after about three months of treating them and observing them very carefully. At this point I had lost about half of the fish that I had to start off with and it was around the time when I was finally letting myself feel guardedly optimistic that one day I went out to check on the fish in the morning like I always did and I noticed that several new fish had developed dropsy symptoms literally overnight so it became immediately clear that the underlying issue had not been resolved, the treatments had not worked and the problem still persisted. And I needed a different mode of attack because just trying medications that I thought might help uh, based on the symptoms and just, you know, deduction, it was not working. And I could not continue to try a whole bunch of different medications hoping that one of them would work because medications are damaging to the kidneys of the fish. And the kidneys in my fish were already clearly very, very compromised because they were having uh, dropsy, which usually the root cause of that is kidney problems. So I decided it was time for a different approach and I reached out to the University of Florida Aquaculture Lab to see if they could work with me and help me get a diagnosis for my fish. Now they needed me to send as many of my fish as possible to the lab to be uh, sacrificed and tested so that they could find out what was going on. Ideally they wanted at least five fish but I could only send four fish because keep in mind I only had about 25 fish to choose from to begin with. I selected the four sickest looking ones hoping that in sacrificing these ones, I could hopefully save the ones that were remaining. Right away, the lab reported a substantial buildup of fluid in the body cavity of all the fish that I sent for workup. And I suppose this is unsurprising, considering that the main symptom my fish were having was dropsy, which is a buildup of fluid in the abdominal cavities. And of course, this finding alone was not definitive, so they had to run some tests. And the first tests that they did were bacterial cultures, looking for everything from just your standard run-of-the-mill bacterial infections that can affect aquarium fish up to the more serious and uh, untreatable things such as mycobacteria. All of those bacterial cultures came back completely negative which was great because we were able to rule out bacterial causes of the dropsy. So that was good, but we still didn't know what was causing the dropsy. So they had to do some further tests and they decided next to look at 
to take a microscopic look at some of the internal organs of the fish and this is called histology. It's actually really cool how they do this. They use a special machine to take super super thin slices of tissue from the organs. So thin that they're only like two microns thick. They're so so tiny and they're able to look at those under a microscope and observe really closely the structures of the tissues, see if there's any damage. They can even see if there's any parasites present on the slides. So they did that. This whole process took about 48 days for me to finally get all the results back from the lab. So it was a little bit of a wait. Unsurprisingly, again, since dropsy was the main symptom that my fish were showing, the lab was able to find very severe damage to the kidneys in all of the fish that I sent for workup. They found a lot of granulomas in both the anterior and posterior kidneys. And they explained to me that these granulomas are an immune response of the body trying to wall off something that it didn't like, such as a bacteria, which we had already ruled out, so maybe parasite or foreign body. Since they had already ruled out bacteria, it was looking like it was probably a parasite. On the posterior kidney, which is responsible for filtering the blood, they also found many calcified tubules, which they explained to me is another sign of very severe damage to these tissues. When I got the results back from the lab, here's what they said. We were not able to definitively determine the cause of the granulomas and mildly enlarged kidneys in your particular fish, and in addition to the causes in these articles, there are numerous other possibilities that cause similar lesions. I'm sure you'll read the descriptions in some of these papers and have the natural inclination to say that's it because there are similarities with your case. I wish we could have been able to pinpoint the cause. If it was one of these infectious causes, it it may have been early in the disease process, making it more difficult to find the culprit because these infections can become much more severe than we saw in your fish. It's kind of interesting they say these infections can become way worse than what we saw in your fish because the fish that I sent actually were not the sickest that I had ever had. Uh, I had had previously fish that either I had to euthanize because they were so sick or they died in the tank on their own because they were so sick and they were showing much more severe symptoms than the fish that I was actually able to send to the lab. It was kind of a timing thing because by the time I decided that it was bad enough that I needed to reach out and get some professional laboratory help with this, at that particular moment in time, I only had, I think it was one fish that was showing definite, full-blown, very severe dropsy. The other three were kind of just starting to show symptoms, barely. So if I had been able to send four or even five fish that were all showing, like all at the most severe stage that I saw my fish in, I think maybe the results could have been different. but. The timing just didn't work out that way. In the end, I really didn't get the closure that I hoped I would get by pursuing a lab diagnosis because while they were able to take a good microscopic look at the tissue from the kidneys and determine that there was pretty extensive tissue damage in all the fish that I sent for testing, they were not able to actually see any parasites on the slides as we had hoped that they would be able to see. So that really sucked and it was really frustrating, you know, having gone through all of this and getting an inconclusive answer. But it's not unheard of. They actually warned me in advance many times that this might happen because sometimes no matter how hard you look, these organisms just evade detection. For whatever reason, they're really small, they're not really widespread in the entire kidney, or maybe since these slices of kidney tissue that they uh, used to look at, were so incredibly thin, they were really only a couple of microns thin, uh, they could only really look at a tiny, tiny portion of the kidney. So the parasites could have, and I think probably were, but that's my opinion, present in the kidney somewhere. They just didn't happen to see them in the tiny slices of tissue that they took for observation. So even though the lab couldn't give me a definitive diagnosis in the end, they did say that the findings could potentially point to a couple of different parasites that were affecting my fish. The first one being amoeba and the second one being a very very tiny mycozoan type of parasite called Hophorellus, which I actually hadn't heard of previously. Both have been cited in scientific literature as being known to cause or being able to cause the particular type of kidney damage that was found in my fish. So it's very possible, although unfortunately not 100% confirmed, that this is the parasite at play here. And the thing that really sucks is 
Okay, so first there's no definitive diagnosis, and second there's a possible inclination that it could be one or two things, but both of those things, neither of those things I should say, have any known treatment. So essentially those things are both incurable at this time as far as we know, as far as science knows. And even if, say, I had wanted to throw some really out there experimental treatments at my fish, basically just throwing as much and as strong of medications at them as I possibly could, that it was never even discussed as an option with the lab because the kidneys of my fish were at that point so incredibly damaged by whatever was affecting them that they wouldn't have been able to survive any further treatments. Even the most gentle of medications, they recommended that I not use because the kidneys are so compromised that anything could put them over the edge and kill them instantly. So at this point, I've really exhausted every possible avenue that I could have tried to help these fish over the past six months that I've been dealing with this, up to the point of paying hundreds of dollars to have these lab tests done. And the lab tests in the end seem to point possibly to one of two parasites that are both incurable. More of my fish had died with dropsy just while waiting for the lab results to come back. And at the point when the results did come back, I had 12 fish left, all of which were really, really lethargic. Just the life had gone out of them. You know, they never swam around, they never acted like normal, healthy goldfish. Uh, and all of them except for one already had signs of dropsy starting either very very severe or you know at some at some point in the progression of severity all of them but one so I wish that things could have worked out differently but that was you know that was the situation the reality that I was faced with the only thing left to do was to put these fish out of their misery I was gonna say I made the decision to euthanize them but it wasn't even a decision at this point. It was, there was no other option. This was the only thing left to do to help, you know, end the suffering for these fish because they were suffering. Even though it's been, you know, six months of dealing with this, so I've been able to mentally prepare myself this whole time for the potential of losing most or even all of my fish, it's still hard, you know, I don't know if you can fully prepare yourself for something like this, like something that's such a huge part of your personality, what you do on a daily basis, just being all of a sudden taken away. In this goldfish hobby or fish keeping hobby at large in general, there are a lot of pathogens out there that, that are incurable and it's almost impossible to avoid getting them because every single time you add a new fish into your care, even if you put them through the ringer as far as quarantining them for a really long time and putting them through prophylactic medications, at any point, any of your new fish that you bring in could bring in with them some kind of parasite that you can't detect that could end up killing your entire group of fish. It happens. It happened to me. It has happened to a lot of other uh, friends of mine who keep fish as well. It's something that's out there in the hobby and it happens. You have to decide if it's if it's not worth it to you to go through this or if it is worth it and you're gonna pick yourself up and move on anyways, which is what I'm trying to do here. This has made me wonder if some of the issues I've had with my discus are possibly related to the issues I'm having with my goldfish because even though I'm always careful about cross-contaminating between tanks, there's still so many ways in which you could accidentally cross-contaminate. For instance, maybe you don't wash properly under your fingernails or maybe you don't go far up enough on your arms with soap and water and then you uh, accidentally transfer pathogens from one tank to the next by doing that. And I do wonder if some of the issues that I've been having with my discus are related to what's happening with my goldfish. I think that it's pretty likely, but of course I don't know for sure because I haven't done any tests on them like I have with my goldfish. My discus are not doing well. I have tried everything under the sun, but they still refuse to eat anything and everything. They will not eat. They've been starving themselves for at least a month now and they're not going to make it. You may be typing suggestions in the comments right now, but believe me, I have tried 
everything possible under the sun to get these discus to eat and to try to fix whatever underlying issue there is that's causing them not to eat. But nothing works. And it reminds me of what I've been going through with my goldfish because even though I've tried everything under the sun, nothing works because it's an incurable parasite that they probably have. And I do wonder if at, if at some point along the line this pathogen got transferred into my discus tank as well and could be the reason why I'm having issues with my discus, but I don't know. So basically, yeah, I'm in a weird place right now, you know, having goldfish has been such a huge part of me and what I do on a daily basis and this channel, you know, for so many years, I haven't been without goldfish in over nine years. So this is a big deal and it's, it's really kind of um, disorienting in a way because I feel like a part of me is missing. Part of who I am as a person is missing and it's super weird. But I will be getting goldfish again. It will probably be not for another month or so because I don't currently have any tanks that are set up and ready for goldfish, for new goldfish yet. But I will eventually. I'm actually planning a visit to, up to Dandy Aranda's, just like I did in 2015, to pick out some new fish for him to then send back to me and also to make some videos while I'm there so you guys can see it as well. So that'll be upcoming probably tentatively in December. And I guess, you know, until then, I'm just going to focus on the other pets that I have and, and wait. <laughs>